Hi guys, DCT Makes here, back on the ring maker. Um, somebody asked about the uh, stainless steel versus the uh, silver plated stuff. Yeah, even if you can't read the markings, the thickness and the strength it takes to actually bend this stuff uh, is a telling factor. That's stainless steel. It, it's hard to bend. If you can read it, obviously, yes, stainless steel. But if you can't, then just how, how you can bend the stuff will uh, be a telling point. But here, here's a piece of plated old silver. And even, even that thick, it's like I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I can bend it. So we'll do this one because we did stainless steel the last time. But... Uh, just a different selection of stuff. Look, look for stuff with fancy patterns in it. With stuff like this, you're gonna have a problem with bending these parts because they're so thick. So just pay attention to the pieces until you start getting into this real heavy. You probably wanna do stuff that's not too thick and um, relatively malleable. Um, and save the thick stuff till you get good at it. Not that I'm good at it, but uh, okay, preparation. Theoretically, you want to keep this this scroll pattern here. Looks like a, looks like a primrose or something like that with a bit of chatter work going down the side there. Filigree kind of stuff, but um, this one's been, looks like it's been burnt. So a lot of the silver plates off, but this is just, you know, more for technique than what it looks like at the end. Now, one thing, most people's skin can kind of stomach um, stainless steel you know, on their skin without them getting rashes and stuff. Most people. There's a few people that can't, but uh, majority of people stainless steel. But with this stuff, you got to be careful if, it, if the surface is broken underneath, depending on how old it is. Could be all kinds of different metal that you uh, really don't want next to your skin so you kind of take a look and work out what you're dealing with before you just go banging a ring out and selling it so anyway so first thing i do is here i would cut this on the end of that kind of filigree work there just to get most of it in because it's going to end up on the if it's a twist ring it's going to end up we're going to try and make it end up like facing us so we'll cut that up. See how easy that was to cut off? I'm just gonna like uh, save the grinder here a little bit of work. Just cut the corners off a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. And then down on this little tiny grinder, you can use on a big grinder if you want, but fine wheel. I'm just gonna, you wanna finish the ends before you start bending them. Much easier to work it out there than when it's twist it up into a ring and then you can't get around the back of it so remember this is going to touch somebody's skin so kind of keep a tally on there what it feels like you don't have to, you don't have to be too aggressive uh, with the stainless you're gonna it's gonna be a little bit more aggressive but with this old stuff And just think about when it's turned around in a ring, where that shape's gonna lie against this part. So it's gonna be bent round a couple of times. It's gonna lay against this part or this part. So it depends on which way you're twisting it. Remember we talked about this. There's a natural slot in your finger here, going downhill, straight across, downhill this way. Same on the other hand, obviously. This way, straight across, down. So a ring, if a ring comes up and is going this way, it doesn't look good on that finger, but if it comes up and goes across here, goes across here, then it looks better. So anyway, now the other end of this fancy little fellow is an abrasive wheel. I'm just gonna, just nip, you don't have to press really hard. You saw what it looked like. Just gonna, Take some of the junk off it. I 
if the part's getting hot, you probably press them too hard. Yeah, and don't tell me about the, uh, the safety guards. Everybody takes the safety guards off. Just watch your fingers, wear gloves if you feel that you need to, but uh, with, silver, with the silver plate stuff, you don't want to work it too much because you just take the plate straight off because it's really thin. Unless they're like, obviously, pure silver stuff. You would, probably wouldn't be doing this to it if it was. But, try and get it as prepared as possible before you bend it. Just doing it, like I say, doing it afterwards is a chore. That's a little different, isn't it? Not focused. Look. Look, patina. <laughs> She's everywhere, that patina girl. Just gets a little bit more of that off the back. There she goes. Okay, that'll do for just showing you guys purposes. But uh, you can get it real shiny. Like I say, if you go too far, you're going to take the silver plate off. But okay, so we've got the relatively large jaws. Remember, with this machine we put together here, you can um, kind of change the circumference here to match the actual mold head but now if I'm coming in this way and make a left hand ring this hand on this these fingers if I'm doing it like that way down it'll be these fingers and it'll fit on those fingers you'll get used to it but now this is not going to take as much force as what the um, stainless did but uh, here we go I hope you can see it better than the last one. I'm not touching it. Now remember, I got a three foot rod on the end of that fulcrum point there. There's a three foot rod going straight up. So there's a huge amount of force being pressed through here. Okay, so you work it round. Now remember we're going, see it's climbing uphill compared to here. You guys see that? Look, ogre sized. Big toe. Okay, you should have some music on for this, right? Okay, so there's a ring basically, like huge, right? But you see it's worked at an angle up. And where this lies with regards to this, it's probably if it's like a number nine ring, nine through 11, it's going to be over here somewhere when this comes back round. But We'll uh, we'll change the we'll change the head and we'll take it down a little further. This is where it starts getting a little odd because uh, you got to work it up and down. Get my fat paws out of the way. You got to work it up and down. See it tightening around, and you're going to get to the point where you're actually trying to touch that again. So you have to kind of. Manipulate where you're pressing and maybe turn it upside down. Just takes a little time to learn what metal is going to do. Now you make this piece too long, you know, if this was the standard size, you know, small spoon, it's not going to be too big, but this was a like an olive fork or something. So look, it's nearly gonna end up nearly going around three times, but see how thick it is? This is silver plate, Roger's silver plate. So I don't know which year I can try and find that out, but uh, 
there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of different pieces of plate silverware and manufacturers look them up so now if you take a look you want these edges not to feather tail out unless you're specifically trying to make a ring like that but uh, that will be the hardest part of this ring probably to bend we're not probably not going to get it on this set of forms but we may on the next just try it let's see if we can actually get a little bit of a little bit of bend in it and just picking it up on the tail of the of the form of the jaw form here it started to turn in a little tiny bit got to be careful though when you put them on let's call this the platen whatever you want to call that but i'm going to call it the platen for now if you tilt it you're going to bend it out or in remember you're trying to twist the ring in not out so let's take a look see what it is right now now with these when you sell them you're you know, going on mid ring so this one is about currently about you guys see that that's nine that's eleven so just off mid ring with nine and three quarters coming down to ten turn it around the other way see it's a little bigger so be careful about how it's going to go on the finger is this going to be the bottom or the top and now this is going off this way so it's more it's more going to be like on this kind of finger so it's going to be down like that and you could wear it on the middle i got fat fingers but you see it matches the crease line of your fingers that makes sense hopefully okay so we'll change the jaw out and just try and uh, tidy some of this up I know, stupid design so far. This is just early days on this one, just trying to work out what to do. You take that jaw out and we'll tighten it down a little bit. Yeah, right. There we go. Okay. Put the carrier back in there. Hold that. Now, you can make this bigger than the jaws to play fancy games with the metal, but right now, that is not too far off. You now, you could also use the platen as well, and that is way smaller than the circumference of this actual jaw. So, for right now, Let's take a look, see if we can tidy this up a bit. You're just knocking that down. Every time you touch it, you're going to change it. So, you'll learn how the metal's going to react. Some, some of them don't work. I'm putting it enough enough weight on this arm that I'm actually starting to lift the top board on my bench and that's a four by eight sheet screwed down to huge timbers so huge amounts of force it just working it down a little bit little bit little bit And this, uh, this part here is flaring out because I manipulated this so it actually twisted the metal out. And this is so soft that I just tweaked that back in. Look, it's more or less level with the surface now. You basically have a ring and when I knocked it down, the form 
it actually tightened the gap. Now, so we've got, forget the size right now, it's just how it's going to look on the finger, where this is going to be in relation to the fancy bit that you want to put on the finger. It's like that. I mean, obviously, we're not going to fit on my finger like that, but okay, so making them bigger is easy, making them smaller, as you see, not. So, and this is relatively thick, so you can put it on the mandrel and you can manipulate it. You guys see that? And you may have to put it back on here to tighten it back up. It depends on the metal. Now you're going to take it past where you want it to be and it's going to spring back. So what I'm trying to do is get it to about here on this finger so you can see what it looks like. Pinwheel. It's away. Okay. So it's going to tuck in the finger and it's going to be like that kind of thing. So now theoretically you don't want that, like I say, to fit here because it's going off here. So theoretically you could turn it around, fit it on this finger and it will scoop out and up. You could also cut this, reform it. You could have done that prior. You can still do that on this part, on the outside part. But um, there's a nice line running around this on the top there, you see it? So it would fit on that finger too. Because, again, I keep saying it. Everybody's like, well, what about the twist? It was left hand or right hand? You, you can fit it on both fingers, on both hands, a different way. So... You got any questions give me a shout but uh, that's the way to make a ring you guys be safe take it easy bye